honor of Dr. Ahmed D that uh, brilliant guy, so in his memory. Um, so I just want to pose this question to you. When you are cherry picking verses from the Bible, it seems like your own argument makes you lose. For example, the last thing that you said is, Jesus on the cross cried out, Eloi, Eloi. If Jesus is on the cross, you've already defeated your own argument because you claim that he never died because you used Hebrews. Um, when you used Acts chapter 13, verse 30 today to start, the, to start your debate, you said that is a conclusion that Jesus is a servant, but that goes on to say that the servant was killed. Um, so I, my main question to you is about the resurrection Easter was there. If you're going to use Dr. Ahmed Dida's arguments about the sign of Jonah, I believe Jonah died, and the, the one on the room where the disciples were, where, disciples were there and Jesus came, um, the assumption that Mr. Dida makes is that nobody, the disciples there did not witness him on the cross, but they did. Um, John, who writes that event, talks about it, and it's a locked room. So I feel there's a lot of assumptions in there, and I feel that when you're cherry-picking verses from the Bible, you are not affirming its full authority. You're only highlighting one sentence, even the one you use, John chapter 5, verse 30, where uh, Jesus talks about the authority. It goes on to say that he existed before the world with God. So why don't you use the totality of the Bible, and why do you use arguments that support your view when the other ones defeat yours. Thank you. Thanks for the question. <clears throat> the brother has given a, a pretty much a small talk, so I have to respond to that. Hopefully I can get five minutes. <laughs> but let's start with that. The first thing the brother mentioned that he is, you know, a big fan of Dr. Ahmad Didat. So he's passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him, you know, highest levels of Jannah for all the hard work and eff efforts that he've put in his life. And, you know, I, I myself, um, I'm somebody who has gone into this field of comparative religion and interfaith dialogues through his work and my own teacher and mentor, Brother Imran. So we owe a lot to Dr. Ahmad Didat for all his efforts and work. So may Allah bless him and increase his position in Jannah. Coming to your question, in regards to Jesus being put on the cross, as I mentioned from Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27, verse number 46, where Jesus cried, Elai, Elai, Lama Sabachthani. And then I said that on the According to the book of Hebrews, Jesus did not die, which is again from the part of the Bible. I am not contradicting that. My point is Jesus was put on the cross, but he did not die. If I am having an accident and I become, you know, injured, does not mean I died. He was put on the cross. They wanted to kill him. They stabbed him. They did whatever they could. But this is the miracle of God. This is the victory of God that God saved him in spite of all of that. And this is very clearly relevant in two verses of the Bible. First, as you just mentioned, do not use the argument of Ahmad Didat. But interestingly, what happens is while knowing the argument, nobody answers it. And you mentioned that why am I quoting only John 5.30 and not 31, 32, 33 or other verses of the Bible? Why am I cherry picking? If you want me to read the whole Bible, I'm happy to sit down and read the whole Bible. But we only have a limited time, so I have to pick certain portions. The, we have the other guest speaker in order to respond to that. I am yet to hear a response for where did Jesus say, I am God or worship me? That is not mentioned in any Bible of the world. The challenge remains open. It's for the last 40 years. From the time of Ahmad Ida till today. Coming to the sign of Jonah, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38 to 40. Jesus says, This adulterous generation asks me for a sign, and the only sign that and the only sign that will be given to them is the sign of Jonah, as he was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale. So shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And you already know the answer that Jesus did not fulfill this prophecy of three days and three nights. Now the counter question to that is, when Jesus came back after three days, all, when he was put on the cross, was there any eyewitness who witnessed Jesus dying? All the disciples of Jesus fled away. None of them were there. Nobody witnessed it. They thought on the cross, when you put a man, you stab him, you trouble him, you pin him, you think he died. He's in coma, he's tired. They put his body in the tomb, and when they, he comes out of it from within three days, he goes to meet his disciples, as mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, he goes into the upper room, and when his disciples see him, they are astonished. They think this is a spirit. So Jesus says, no, come and touch me. I've got bones and flesh, and his spirits don't have bones and flesh. Trying to tell them, I'm alive, I never died. Where did Jesus die? And at the end, then Jesus tells them, bring me some food because I am hungry. After death, I and you will be hungry. If you did not eat for three days, you will be very hungry. 
That is exactly the proof from the Bible that Jesus did not die. Book of Hebrews, we go back to it again. Jesus prayed to God to save him from death and God listened to his prayer. He was put on the cross, but he did not die. I conclude with the verse of the Quran from Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayah number 157, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ Neither did they kill him, nor did they murder him by crucifixion. They put him on the cross, but he did not die. And this is the confusion amongst the Christian churches till this date.